This video has been brought to you by the Landscape Certified Contractors Association. Due to the membership support, we're able to bring content to each and every one of you. If you have a topic or a product you'd like us to review, or if you want to become a member, visit www.irrigatortech.com and hope to hear from you soon. Enjoy the video. So this is the 521. Inside, you've got to always check your batteries right here. Do not wire track without checking your batteries in the field. Why make it harder than it's necessary to be able to do things? If I've got two charged batteries, it just makes it that much easier for me in the field. And you can check the batteries by just turning the knob to batteries, putting it on. So it looks like I'm pretty low right here right now because it's not even kicking over. So I'll go ahead and I'll flip it off. So these little settings right here, one through five, what I do and how I use them in the field, I've been wire tracking since uh, 77, so I've been doing this for quite a long time. I'm able to go ahead and hook this up. I ground this in the field with this, with a little screwdriver or a stake in the field. So I put the black wire on the ground, boom, in. I take the red wire and I put that on the station that I'm trying to wire track. So if I'm at the clock, I take it off the terminal strip so whatever it's hooked to whatever kind of clock it's hooked to i unscrew the wire take off number seven and i put this on it and don't let it touch the box okay then this is in the ground okay so then i in turn put the headset on walk away with my uh, uh little prober here probably 10 20 feet away and what i do is i set it on one if I walk around and it is not kicking me back and forth right on my headset here and on here, it's not bouncing. Okay, it's not going to zero, to 10, zero, nine, eight, seven, six, back and forth bouncing. That means that it's not sending a good signal. If I can do that on one and it's bouncing back and forth and I have a strong signal, then that means that I'm probably within 100 feet of that wire break. If I have to kick it all the way to the highest signal, number five, that means it's at the far end where the valve is at. So the valve's maybe 2,000 feet away, over streets, behind bushes, over by the trash cans, by transformers, all sorts of different things you have to go around. So if I kick it over to five, and, and then I get a strong, I pick it up. Okay, so then if I kick it over to five, that means I'm picking up the signal and it had to come from here, go all the way to where the nick is at the farthest part away. So it's probably, if I have a 1,000 foot run, it's probably somewhere in the 900 foot range. So because it's hitting there and bouncing all the way back, that means I have to have the strongest signal on this to get it to bounce back. If I in turn had it on three to get the same signal, if I had a thousand foot run, it's at the 500 foot range. So I'd be able to know. So obviously one or two or th uh, one and two, I'm within a hundred feet of it. If I had a thousand foot run, and then if it's, I set it on three, I'm at 500. If I set it over to five, that means I pick up my equipment from the clock, hook everything back up again, and then go to the valve. I cut the wires where the solenoid is, put the red wire on the, the valve that I'm trying to track and I put this stake in, put this on a screwdriver, put it in the ground and then I would be about a hundred feet away from it. I, I've done it so many times it always ends up that way. So when I say hey I've got a two hour wire tracking job and they say look at you've got this much time to get it done I do not want to waste any time walking behind bushes where trash cans are, controllers, walking across streets, street lights, transformers, all that stuff that ends up bouncing me all over the project instead of just staying focused on the two wires that I have to track or the one wire I gotta track. So that's a big shortcut right there, is being able to set this gauge, making sure my batteries are okay on this unit itself. Always making sure that there's batteries on my handheld unit that's right here. So I gotta make sure my batteries are good on this. I turn it on, and if this is on, it's bouncing back and forth. So you're always listening with this, hooked up to this, in the field, watching this gauge. 
So as you're bouncing back and forth, I'm on top of the wire, I have this. I am in turn, it bounces back and forth, I'm right on the wire. I'm listening, I'm seeing. I'm listening, I'm seeing. If I go away from the wire, it goes and then it gets silent. The more, when I'm over the top of the wire, it's silent. When I'm away from the wire, it's going and making that noise. Pretty cool noise I make, huh? So it's going in the field. So on the wire, silent. Off the wire, makes a noise. And this is a very slow process. It's not something that you can just run or anything else. Because if I have the signal too high on this, and I set it to five, which a lot of people make that mistake, they figure, hey, I got a headache, why take two aspirin, why not take 10 to make my headache go away? No, nope, that's not how it works. How it works is that you put it on the lowest setting so it bounces back and forth. If I put it on the highest setting, I am gonna pass up nicks and any little shovel uh, nicks inside of it, root nicks, anything else like that, I'm not gonna be able to catch. And you can have multiple nicks in the field, not just a solid, break of a shovel. So a lot of times the gophers go over because the noise from the buzzing when you get the, the electricity going through to the solenoid, it's zzzz. That hurts the gopher's ears. The gopher goes over. Any rodent, prairie dogs, all your gophers, your squirrels, they'll go over to it and chew on it to stop that buzzing because it irritates them. And then it stops and then now you have an open wound in the wire. So, and then that open wound ends up making it so you don't have a, a good current. Enough open wounds, you in turn do not have a 24 volts going out in the field. So this is a very slow process. Once I get out in the field and I can wire track back from the valve or wire track to, from the clock to it. Now I go from junction box to junction box. So I take it, I wire track over to the next junction box. Once I find that junction box and I've got, I'm good to there, I pick up my equipment, I cut the wires there and I go, hey, that 200 feet is eliminated. I'm getting 24 volts right here. So to get the signal closer so I can pick it up, I don't leave it where the clock is 200 feet away. I go ahead and pick up my unit, tack it, put everything back how it is, go back over to where that junction box is and then I wire track there because I want to get that signal to go to the stake and bounce back to my unit, my 521. The closer, the better it is. Don't make it so it's so far away. So little bite chunks. So I take it, boom, get to the junction box, cut it, hey, that's behind me. So if I have to report to my supervisor, my foreman, I can say I wire track 200 feet today to the first junction box. Then I go into the next junction box and I start process of elimination to getting closer to where the break is at. If I get tired and I got too many obstacles to get through, then I pick up my equipment and say I'm good to here, and then I go over to the valve and I work myself back over as close as I can to the next junction box so I can say I'm 200 feet from the valve and I'm working good. If I put a Station Master Pro or a tester on that, I can make the valve click off and on at that junction box. I know I've eliminated that 200 feet. If I go from the clock back over, I'm good. I can run a wire over the top of the grass if it's just on grass or through the planter, run a wire on top, hook it up. If it fires, hey, I know, I'm getting close. I'm a detective and I am getting this closer and closer. I got 100 feet here. And then the process between that junction box and the other junction box, I know it's somewhere in there. And what I'm doing is trying to figure out where that is. So then I start working my way between that. And hopefully you only got two junction boxes out in the field and that's a typical wire that you're going to have so if it's 200 300 feet away then 200 300 feet away from the valve i'm in the middle of it process of elimination start getting the equipment closer to where the problem is so the signal is there make sure that you don't even start wire tracking unless the soil is wet we need that state that screwdriver that i connect my black wire to to be exactly on the screwdriver and it just slides right into the soil. Not rock hard, don't bother doing it, even starting the day if it's rock hard. Soak the soil because the, the signal from this unit out to the stake and both being moist, it bounces, bounces back and forth. If it's dry soil and I'm out in the desert, I'm in Palm Springs, I'm on a golf course, and everything's not wet, manually water it because it compresses the soil, moisture, the electricity will travel through and it goes yang, yang, and it 
radiate so I can find that unit in the field much easier. So as I get closer, then I can pinpoint it with this. I can go at an angle and I go, hey, I've got it from here to here. Boom, mark it with marking paint. I got it from there back over to here. So now it's right in within that 100 foot range. So I've been able to at any time stop. Then I set this on top. You can see there's a little ball there. I set it, go at a 45 degree angle like this on the soil. And then what it's doing, it's going ding, 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 ding. And then when it stops and it goes silent, then I know, hey, that's where, how deep it is. Then I go farther, noise, 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 silence. Mark it between where I had it, where I pegged it out to be broke, and how far. If I want a foot away sideways, it's a foot deep. If I go two feet, three feet, I've actually been in the field and had it six feet deep, okay? Six feet deep and said, you need to get a backhoe out here. It was huge to get it. It would take too much time for me to dig and go and, and figure that out. So what I do is I take it, I can tell the property manager or whoever my customer is, I found it, it's right here. Do you want me to dig it at 100 bucks an hour, 75 bucks an hour? Or do you wanna hire somebody else to be able to dig it and I'll stay here and work with them? If I have a couple people with me, we can do it with a backhoe or we can do it in the field with shovels. But then as we dig and you're looking at digging, I did clear the area around me. I find out how deep it is. I pull the grass back, put some burlap down, dig the hole. Now, I don't want to take a big digging bar or a pick and start slamming into it because it's going to be wherever the wire is, that's where the main line's going to be, out in the field. So that main line, all of a sudden, I don't want to call the customer and say, we had 24 wires out here. We had one little nick in the wire. Now I got 24 wires and they're all broke and I got a main line break. So what I do is I dig down about six inches. Boom, I set it sideways. Oh, I got another two feet. Then I dig down a little bit more aggressively. I go down, hey, I'm within a foot now. Then I dig down. Same thing if I had a backhoe. I worked at Riverside National Cemetery for almost three months with Mike Cummings out there, and we found, oh, it was close to 400 wire breaks that were three to four feet deep. I'd like to see some other instructor out in the field doing the kind of work that we had done years ago when I was a, a hundred pounds lighter. Oh my gosh, it was something. So I was out in the field, we found all the wires, we did it. I mean, I've got tens of thousands of hours with this wire tracking, the 521. I wish I had the new 521 and the new Amata unit. Oh my God, it would have been so much easier. But we dig down, we go, we take the backhoe, boom, go down two more feet. We jumped in the hole. I literally jumped in the hole. And that's a sight to see of a guy at my weight to be able to jump inside the hole. And I lay this on top and say, take it down another 18 inches. Boom, and then I'd lay down, take a screwdriver and just start digging now if you've wire track you know i'm talking right man i take a little digging thing take i'd get the wires and i'd find the wires and then i'd just claw around and start separating the wires and i would find the nick in the field so you want to make sure that you take it one step at a time let your client know this is not a fast process this takes one step at a time and it's methodical work from the clock out work from the valve out and then you get there and now all of a sudden you find out how deep it is you accomplish your goal if they say let me dig it let them dig it if you want to dig it say bring some workers here tell them i'm just trying to let you know but if i got there and they said hey dig it i can find things in an hour and a half and i find it in an hour and a half and i said you know what it's, it's going to probably take you i'm now almost 60. i'd say find somebody else to help dig the hole get them out here we'll dig it real fast don't pay me 100 bucks an hour to spot this so i would get a level two or a level three irrigation guy out there have him help me dig it we'd get down in the hole i love it it's awesome to be finding something it's like an easter egg hunt finding that wire and saying man somebody hit this years ago or a rock leaned against it and bruised it or a root pulled on it and broke it everything can be mended in the field with water management being so popular these days, we cannot put battery operated units in the field everywhere. I go to jobs all over the place and they've got 100 stations and they got 15 stations on battery operated units. They're handy. They're only a temporary fix. We want to be able to work and have water management in the field. We need to find all the wires in the field, have them run them back 
to the clock and be professionals. Don't just go in there and say, yeah, forget it, I can't fix it. You know, it is not, you want to say, I'm an irrigator tech certified contractor in the field doing the job. You want to be able to wire track. You want to be able to water manage. You want to be able to show that you're the best in the field and that I can now water manage this big 24 station plot because I fixed the wires in the field. So I will have more information on the 521 and other wire tracking equipment in the field. I hope this helps you. If you got any questions, I would love to help answer all those questions in the field. I have got thousands of hours and I have helped a lot of people doing wire tracking the field. I enjoy it. I love the experience in the field helping people. Thanks a lot and this is Richard Daigle from Irrigator Technical Training School.